Hello, I'm Delana with the Shigoda Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here today with business owner Haas Durrett. He owns Hostile Motors. Hostile Motors is located north on Business Highway 69, also known as Jefferson Highway. We are going to talk to Haas as a business owner today, as well as just Haas. Who is he? What's he done? What's he going to do? How's it happen? All that good stuff. Before we get started, I will tell you that I don't edit videos, and we cannot stop this. So. You're going to be on your best behavior as well as no cuts. Yes. All right. Agreed. <laughs> so, got that verbal contract down. Yeah. And why Shakota? Well, it's where we were raised. It's where we live. Our family's been here forever and been in business and stuff. It's where my wife and I raise our children. And we have a significant investment in, uh, in Shakota. Um, Plus, the, the main reason is because it's a great town. And so, I feel like there's plenty of opportunities here that we don't, you don't have to go anywhere else. Um, this, there's opportunities everywhere here, especially in a town like this, it's growing. Yes. And it's growing at a pretty good rate. Um, True. Property values are going up. So, if I was you, I'd buy now. <laughs> Buying later, it will be probably not very easy. You can make money if you buy now. So, use that anyway. nugget. Yeah, use that little nugget. Anyway. So, I know that you've owned other businesses in the past, and I, I pretty much know where you got started. Um, however, not everyone will. So, can you give us a little background and what business got you started, or how did you get started? Well, uh, my dad was in the salvage business and stuff, and so he was, I would go when I was younger with him to swap meets and things where you, you know, buy and sell car parts and things. And we would, I would buy some and I would sell some there. And so that's how I kind of got started into buying and selling. So it was mostly taught from my dad. Um, but as I got older in high school and stuff, I would, I would buy a wrecked vehicle through the, you know, through the auction and rebuild it on the weekends or at, after school and then I would you know sell it and make a profit and I would turn over you know try to do two or three a month if I could and then when I was 19 years old we started um, Shakota quickly retired and ran that till I was 37 I sold it to Rob Underhill Rob and Danny Underhill but in the meantime I had invested in other properties, I bought rental houses, mm -hmm. properties, I bought car washes. Yes. I had another tire shop in Eufaula called Lefties. Um, yeah, had one in Oak Mulgee. Um, so, ice houses, ice houses uh, I bought some commercial property and stuff, uh, I sold it, sold a piece of it to Taco Bell, which is a, in my opinion, was a big achievement. I, I agree. Cause I eat there well, a lot. Not box. <laughs> but, well, not only did uh, you know we made a little money on the sale. I eat there all the time. <laughs> but the biggest deal is it created forty plus jobs, and for a town the size of Shakota, or the even this area, Shakota Falls area, it's a you know forty plus job. That's a big deal. Jobs and are important. It may not be you know, dream job or whatever, but it's a job to get you started on and move you up into that next category or wherever your dreams and aspirations are and stuff. So I've always looked for opportunity. Um, at first I looked for opportunity and then eventually opportunity starts looking for you when you've got a lot going on and stuff. So it's just, it just kind of starts happening, you know what I mean? And anybody can do it, and that's what I've told people for a long time, is you can, anybody can get started in any kind of business. It doesn't take a ton of money to get started. It usually just takes a lot of work and a lot of Persistence. connections. Persistence. Um, it's putting in the hours that normal people are too smart to do. <laughs> is what it normally is and stuff. And then eventually you... You can build it up and you don't have to, you know, you get good people so you don't have to work as hard, but it's, it's been good for me and my family. Uh, I feel like it's benefited the town. Definitely you know, has. a lot of the properties that I've owned or bought or whatever have, you know, were vacant or empty lots and we've restored the buildings or um, the car wash, the first car wash I bought was 
had been sitting there empty for eight years and we came in re replumbed everything painted cleaned it up got it going and then i bought the next car wash which was already kind of going and stuff and then the the old tonko's building which you know is now a dispensary and uh sell all kinds of stuff there but anyway that, that building had been there empty for six seven eight years and i was able to missy and i were able to buy it and um uh, and then start you know one thing after another kind of getting getting it opened back up and getting into business and now the gentleman that runs that business yeah he bought the building from me and he's doing a good job with it but and then this 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 dealership here where we sell you know diesel pickups and spartan lawnmowers husqvarna lawn and garden equipment we sell travel trailers we sell a lot of stuff out of this facility but it had been sitting vacant for several years you know i actually forgot there was a building that was here yeah. because this place looks so new and so nice and i i forgot until you just well, mentioned that we bought the house we live next door and we bought that house in 30 acres there and then when i sold the tire shop I didn't have anything to do. Like I woke up one day and all Misty of a sudden I didn't. can't have that. No. I, I, well, I woke up one day and I didn't have nowhere to go, and I, so I went to the tire shop and they. I spent about an hour there and they ran me off, and I was like, "What are you doing here?" And I was like, "I don't know. I don't." Ever. So then I went to the pawn shop and uh, spent about an hour there, and then they, they was wondering what I was there for, and I was like, "I don't. I have nowhere to go. I don't have anything to do for the first time in my life." So, I I came back home and I got off the exit here off of 69 and I saw and it's for the first time I really paid attention to this building and I saw this building here and I was like oh my gosh that is a huge building and the property butts up to my home and it's right here on the exit it's like why not you know what's so I started doing some research found out who owned it and within two days we had struck a deal met him at the airport where he flew his private plane in and we signed a contract and next thing you know I own a a building a big building on the north end of Shakota so I it started as a hobby though I was just gonna like mess around with a couple of trucks you know buying and selling some just kind of get out of the house and have a place to go and it turned into a little more than that we'll we'll probably have gross sales in excess of nine million dollars this year so it's not exactly a hobby anymore it's a it's a pretty big business uh, been able to provide some really good quality jobs out here which is super important um because sales tax lots of sales that tax and stuff uh, especially work. off the lawnmowers and all the parts and things so i feel like it's been everywhere i've you know even the quickly was a brand new building there was nothing it was a parking right. lot you remember it. Oh, I remember. and we built that building brand new from the ground up and stuff so i feel like we've contributed to the town to the overall success of the town in in a lot of ways not just in the properties that we've invested in and got you know back up and stuff but in other projects as well agree so i'm gonna ask you the next question you ready for it yeah you might have answered over half of my questions on that one right there well i'll get going and i just can't <laughs> stop i can't shut it down I'm trying. <laughs> okay yeah because my next question would be how old you were but we've already got that answered and we now know that you're a very old man yeah, so 39 <laughs> By the way. Um, I believe I'm I'm two years younger, just saying, you know, yeah. younger was the key yeah. word there. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the most important thing to have in a business, in your opinion, or to you personally? Um, to me, it's always been relationships. Um, I don't care where you go, who you meet, um, always look at that as an opportunity to develop a relationship. Um, whether you're in a totally different town or a or super old city or Las Vegas. I, mean, I ran into people I've known everywhere I went and it's because I have a, a big network of they may not be close friends but I consider them all friends and they're what they are basically are relationships that I've developed um, over years and years and years and so relationships are the most important thing. Agree. Uh, number two, I think you have to have goals. Um, when I was 19 and starting to quick loop and stuff, I felt like I had a, my 20s to do this, my 30s to do this, and 40s. So 20s were to, 
you know, uh, pay down debt and get to where I have some assets where I can then turn around and use them in my thirties to acquire, and which which is basically what I've done. I've acquired a, a lot of a lot of stuff in my thirties, and then my forties would be kind of sell off the stuff that's maybe you don't make a lot of money off of and it takes a lot of your time, but keep the good stuff in the forties and then maybe in the fifties you sell all this stuff and do I don't know. But you've got to have and maybe in your your goals and stuff will change. But you've got to have you gotta be heading in a direction. You gotta be looking to the future to know where you're going, in my opinion. So relationships, goals, whether it's how much money do you want to have in the bank? Do you want to want, do you want to own a lot of properties? Do you want a cer certain like I did timeline goals like my twenties, my thirties, my forties are this, this, and this? Um, you can do it, however, but you have to do it, in my opinion. Um, that's about that's the only thing I got. I mean, that's the best answer I can come up with. It's just those two things right there: relationships and goals. If you don't have those. You know, everybody thinks you have to have a big pile of money to get started and stuff, and you really don't. I mean, um, my dad co-signed for the note for us to get the quick lube, and but if there was no money involved. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so we did get a head start, I guess you'd say that, or because we had somebody that could do that. But, but as far as like all the struggles that came with it, like when payroll was, we were short on payroll or whatever, that had to come out, you know, I had to find a way to come up with that. Right. And and so that meant, you know, while I was working that job, I had to do other things to increase, you know, keep making money coming, like buying and selling cars or flipping, you know, you can, you can do whatever. There's so many opportunities out there. And then eventually I got to where I didn't have to do that as much anymore. I could start buying properties and stuff. And that's where I feel like the biggest advantage for somebody is, is in properties. They don't, you know, and they continue to go up in value, especially in a town like Shakota, where the property values are, where there's more more demand than there is supply. Um, I feel like the more property you can own in a place that has the potential that Shakota does, the better you are. And so that's why I've invested pretty heavily in Shakota. And I mean, also we live here, but right. I feel like there's good opportunities here for anybody, not just me. Right, right. So in all of your businesses and the things that you've done and Taco Bell, did you run into any obstacles? How do you handle the yeah. word no? Because I don't handle it well at all. Well, <laughs> I mean. so you, when, when you're doing a lot of, when you have a lot of stuff going on in a lot of different directions, to buy more properties or when an opportunity comes up, so that would be the biggest obstacle. Like, like when an opportunity was come up and stuff, I usually, you know, I look at everything that comes my way, and then I kind of pick and choose what works best for me and stuff. But the biggest obstacle is like your debt to your debt to income ratio being at a certain point is where the bank won't loan you no more money. Is when that opportunity that it's like a golden opportunity comes along and you can't do it. You know, that's really the obstacle. The only obstacle is like. Money, <laughs> money yeah. is the problem. You know, really, really <laughs> but you got a ten dollar. Then so then you got to, well yeah but so then you've got to maneuver around, move things around a little bit, and and use your if if you can have your assets paying for your assets, you're in pretty good shape. And so everything everything you do is a strategic um, play on making sure that you have. You're able to get what you're wanting, but you're also not leveraging everything to get it. Gotcha. To where if something else comes along, you still got some assets that are paid paid for. Right. To be able to get, and another thing is, you don't, in my opinion, for what I've I've always done is you don't pay yourself every bit of profit that comes along. You give yourself a set salary and you live on that salary. Anything extra goes back into the business whether it be a properties business or a, a, a car lot or whatever, you reinvest those funds um, and, and you either pay down the debt quicker, uh, eliminating some interest. And I always wanted to do stuff like that because it, it left me equity there that I could then leverage against something else if something come along that, that worked good. 
So you never want to just completely have yourself mortgaged out. Now, to, in the beginning, you'll have to, but at some at a certain point, you want to get to a process or a point where you don't have to do that. That's what I was going to say. Was it probably took you 10, 20 years to get to the point? Yeah, it didn't. It didn't happen overnight. Right. Yeah, I've been doing this for twenty years now. And it took ten years of just paying the bills. You know what I mean? Of just paying the bills and having a goal of paying down the debt to where I could then, in the next 10 years, acquire. Did you ever feel defeated? No. Did you ever feel like, oh my gosh, what have I done? How am I going to yeah. make payroll? Well, no, how am I going to well, yeah, no, how, how, how so, pay my house payment? Or how am I going to do this? Or I'm, It may not look like it from the outside, but I'm pretty conservative uh, on my spending and budgets and... And what I buy and things, I know it, it may look like I just buy everything because, you know, I, I've bought a lot of things, but, and I mean property investment-wise, not just like buying cool cars or whatever. Uh, those are technically investments too. <laughs> 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 in my mind, right? No, I agree. They're totally investments. <laughs> <laughs> they know it's been money fixed. <laughs> but yeah, there's been some roadblocks where you're thinking, you know, I might have gotten myself in a little too deep here, but, but in and the way I look at buying stuff, when I go to buy a property or whatever, I look at it as from a pros and cons um, standpoint. And and I don't mind it having some cons to it, okay? So a piece of property I'm looking at buying right now has some cons, but the cons to me is the profit. If I can eliminate the cons, right, okay, then I, that's my profit. So all I gotta do is make the business more efficient and then, it pays me, but if it'll with the pros and cons it has now, well, if it'll still pay the pay for itself, all I'm interested in is if will it pay for itself, and then I'm interested in can I work on the cons and get it down to where I can make some money on the deal? Because I'm looking at a long term goal as an investor. Uh, I don't need an immediate return out of it because I have sources of income now at this at this stage in my career in my life and stuff. So you just gotta. Make it look like you're buying everything in the world, but but be safe too. Gotcha. Don't don't overextend yourself to where you're sweating it every night. Because I went when I first started, I went to bed at night thinking about the stuff that happened today, the stuff that's going to happen tomorrow, and like I it took me forever to go to sleep at night. And now I got it pretty well down to where I I can go to sleep whenever I want to. <laughs> <laughs> but my gosh, that's the biggest thing I think when you first start out is you're worried about your business all the time. Like it's on your mind. And it was the same way for me. I, every night I'd go home thinking about the jobs that we'd done, the things we had to do tomorrow and stuff. And what I found out was it's all going to be there waiting on you. You ain't got to worry about it tonight. It's just like those dishes in don't, my house. Yeah, don't worry about it tonight. Don't stress out about it. You know what I mean? Because you'll get to where you hate it and stuff. And if you if you keep it at that kind of arm's length, then you you can continue loving what you do. And, and every day is not work. You know, you so kind of get to come here and have fun like I do here at the, at the dealership. I get to come here and we get to wheel and deal and what's better than wheeling and dealing? You know what I mean? You get to, I get to, I get to deal on it when I buy it, trade for it, sell it. I'm like, it's like the best case scenario. I'm like, I can't believe I haven't done this forever. You know? <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, you're good. So, so what advice would you give young people, young entrepreneurs that want to start their own business? Well, have a have a good plan building relationships uh, things like that but I never had really I think the one thing that helped me out early on honestly in the tire shop was I was fairly business minded as it as it was and stuff but I had a a guy who became a mentor to me and which I think is any young person that goes into business it's super hard to do it themselves and, and if they are become successful even like me I, and you know most people perceive me as successful but I didn't do it completely by myself I mean I'm driving the train but there's other passengers on there that are living in advice and stuff I had a gentleman named David Pretty from Haskell who became not only a tire supplier of mine, but he became a really good friend and a mentor, and he taught me. The cool thing about Dave is he took the time to come down and, like, explain to me how how he did things and stuff. And 
So what I learned from that was, was everybody does things differently. And if, and the more other businesses you can, other like-minded people you can get around and ask them questions and things like that, the, the better it is. You know, you learn more, you learn things fast. And like, like someone like me, I adapt quickly. And so I can usually get it figured out pretty quick. Gotcha. So let's, we've talked a whole lot about your business and a lot of how you've gotten started. And there's one thing that I want to know, actually there's a couple things about Shakota wise. And one of those is, do you volunteer or do you serve on any boards or committees for, for the city or for an organization? Yes, I'm vice chairman of the industrial board here in Shakota, the CIDA. And our task is to bring you know, economic gains to Shakota, whether it be, you know, industrial, uh, manufacturing, retail, or whatever. Uh, so I, I try to help as much as I can in that capacity. And then I also serve on the board at Options, which is a nonprofit that helps people with mental and uh, physical disabilities, helps, gives them job training, and uh, also, you know, collects cardboard and stuff in town from the businesses and things. They, they recycle, recycle, they bundle it, and they recycle, they sell it, stuff like that. So Just paper, right? Or paper, do they do plastic? Paper goods. No, they do paper. Just They're paper. maybe thinking about doing plastic. Okay. So Options is a wonderful um, organization that I'm extremely happy to be a part of. I'm on the board with some other folks that uh, do really good work here in town and stuff, and they really care about town, and they care about the, the people out there and stuff. So... Other than that, I belong to a couple other organizations and stuff. Those are the two highlights, as far as I'm concerned, that, that I feel like I get a chance to lend my expertise um, to. And yeah. So, so we've discussed your business. We've discussed some of the things that you volunteer for. And so now I want to know. I know personally that you that you do a lot for Shakota. Some of it's behind the scenes. Some of it's in front of the camera or whatever I know that you donate money to the FFA I know that you go to most every pie auction and I'm not sure if that's actually to help people or if it's to help yourself on that one if you have a pie auction <laughs> and you have a lemon, lemon or chocolate you might want to call me because <laughs> I'm the idiot in the bag that don't like to lose <laughs> so I'm your perfect guy but. so Hold on to that little nugget. Yeah. Also, okay, so I know the things that you've done in Shakota. What would you say is your greatest achievement here for for the citizens, for the town, for the people, for visitors? For well, other than you know owning and, and running businesses and trying to help out people when I can and stuff, it's probably going to be the splash pad in Shakota. Uh, myself, um, Mayor Tarkington. And my friend David Prince, you know, childhood friend, um, so we got together. As old as you. I'm sorry, I'm just yeah, kidding. I think he's older. I think oh, okay, guys. I just want to keep that straight. He may be bumping the forty. <laughs> he, uh, we all got together and had lunch and and discussed how to um, how to make the town better and stuff and and so we came together and decided on a splash pad. We grassroots style did a pie auction did a car show did you know did several different ways to raise money even went around to the local businesses asking for donations and things and which I hate personally but we did it we raised uh, a substa substantial amount of money and then Carrie Underwood and her foundation cats I believe yes um, donated some money and then the city did the rest and they built the facility it's it's been open now for a year or two and as far as I know it's a big hit um, they've now added on to it and built the Justin Durrett Memorial um, Pavilion, which is a beautiful pavilion where you can have picnics and uh, they have the minnow races there uh, oh. during um, Fourth of July. Fourth of July and stuff is my family and I. We uh, we go there. We even brought some friends from Oklahoma City this year down to it, and they had a they had a blast. And they could have been anywhere else in the world, but they wanted to be here with us, and it was good. Um, and then also probably like Taco Bell, bringing Taco Bell to town. I appreciate that. To me, was a major accomplishment. Um, 
it took me two years. Uh, I got the guy in. So it, it's this simple. All I did was I went. I found out who owned the rights to this area for Taco Bell. Oh, okay. I went on their that company's website. I found out who was in real estate and development. And I got their email and I got their cell phone number and I started blowing them up for two years. <laughs> <laughs> so you were really annoying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> every, not every day, but every week at least, I was texting or emailing this person saying, you've got to get to Shakota. You've got to come see this town. This town is amazing. I've got a piece of property here and that is you know, fantastic and it, it needs you here. We want you yes. here. And um, and so finally they uh, agreed to come down and meet with me, probably just to shut me up. And they got down here and um, we were actually able to um, get them, they assigned me a couple of tasks, wanting to know how many gallons the convenience stores, how many gallons of gas the convenience stores sold, how big the school district was, and a few other things they wanted to know. Um, and based off that info, they decided to that this was Shakota was a great fit, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, the more important thing was it created forty plus jobs. Um, so I, I have the piece of property next to it that we just put up for sale. That I'm I'm awaiting to see um, if an Arby's or a Brahms or something like that comes along, and and I I think I think they will because uh, it's the perfect location, but. The cool thing about it is, is it'll bring another option to town. And living here and working here, that's our biggest obstacle so far as, you know, options. Uh, like a bigger town, you'd have a lot more options and stuff. So I'm trying my best to give more options right. to the town. And uh, and, and the, there's so many other byproducts of that. It's... it's um, you know the comps for square footage. You know the, these guys coming and pay for the property and stuff. Other people own property around it, and things will directly benefit it because their property. They're, at some point, they won't be able to say no to selling their business because it'll make them too much money. Right. Which is fantastic for them, and uh, it creates you know several jobs. You know entry level jobs, but they're still jobs. Exactly. Uh, you know our kids now don't have to drive to Muskogee or somewhere else to to work. They can find a job here. And so, I feel like I feel like I've tried to do um, the best I can to to get us to a certain point, and we'll continue to do that moving right. forward and stuff like that. We have a few other projects in the works and stuff that that we'll continue to. All I really care about is rehabbing properties or building a property. Um, and creating some jobs and stuff and something that my my kids my girls Cameron Kinsey can be proud of one day and know that their dad wasn't just a bum he was, <laughs> he, was he was working really hard to make Shakota great and create create you know jobs and, and things like that so it's uh like I said we live here we play here we work here and we want to have places to eat too. Well, yeah. <laughs> like June's is perfect. Oh, yeah. Willie is sixty nine diner is is fantastic. Um, all the local mom and pop joints are are fantastic. And yes. and uh, these fast food restaurants and stuff are great. Also, everything has its purpose. You know, I mean, right. Ryan's uh, Charlie's Chicken. My buddy Ryan owns that. He's got a great store. Um, so it and when you. I feel like when you have more restaurants in an area, that you know, everybody, everybody gets a piece of that and stuff. Yes. So, I, I think it's good for everybody. Uh, it provides jobs and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing. <laughs> well, good. Keep up the good work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only question I have on that is, have you started calling Arby's daily or weekly yeah. or Brahms daily or weekly? I, mean, I know how you got Taco Bell here, so I'm just curious. So, while I was talking to Taco Bell the whole time, I was talking to Arby's also. And we were two weeks Over away from getting, we were getting, we were two weeks away from getting Arby's, the people down here to look at it. And then U.S. Beef is what the name of that outfit is. They have exclusive rights to to Oklahoma. They got bought out oh. two weeks before they were coming down to see us. Because we had, I had the red carpet ready 
I had a sign made that said, Welcome USB, Shakota wants you. Oh, we want man. RV. I, like, I mean, I was rolling out there. I was going to have a circus, you know, and everything. <laughs> like, uh, trapeze, uh, people blowing fire. Marching band. Like, okay. Everything. And in uh, two weeks before that, they got bought out by a company out of Colorado, I believe, or somewhere. And they're not looking to expand in Oklahoma right now. So that's on hold. But I tried... I tried really hard. I was this close from getting you an Arby's. Uh, and I would have loved that because I like the roast beef sandwich. Oh, I know because I, I remember um, yeah. you loved Arby's. I did not as a kid. I do yeah. now. Yeah. And I would sit in the car. But just to be Shall clear, if anybody else is watching, I'll take a lunch on Silver's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, I'm not big. I'll take an I I'll take a cracker man. I'll take an olive man. I'll take it all. Whatever you want. Yeah, whatever. We uh we've got and if I don't have the property, I everybody I know everybody that has property here, so I would love to help you out. Get with somebody that owns property here and uh, get us some more options. So Is there anything that we did not touch that, that you feel like you should say about yourself or no, I just want everybody to know that I'm trying really hard to help get them some more options, provide some more jobs, clean up the best part I can about, you know, abandoned buildings or whatever, any property. Um, and then uh, I love my beautiful wife and my beautiful kids. And I love my sister and niece, too. They're all right. They're pretty awesome. Yeah, that's it.